Hi everyone, welcome to the November edition of Wavelength. Well, we're here in far west Texas in the Guadalupe Mountains, standing in the shadow of El Capitan. We're here to talk about West Texas wind power. Wind power helped tame the West, bringing precious water up from beneath the often parched landscape. Today, that same wind is being harnessed in Texas to provide a clean, renewable supply of electricity. This is the Texas Wind Power Project in Culberson County, the first commercial wind farm in Texas. From the beginning, LCRA contracted to buy 35 megawatts of wind power generated here. Just next door on the same mountain ridge is the Delaware Mountain Wind Farm, completed last year by National Wind Power. LCRA buys 7.5 megawatts of wind-generated electricity from here. And they'll, they'll stay online until they get to about 60, 65 miles an hour. Recently, several LCRA board members and staff came out to West Texas for a first-hand look at just how a wind farm operates. That one start them up all at one time, all the turbines. The wind turbines are monitored and controlled remotely by computer. Operators can face the turbines into the wind and feather or rotate the giant blades to catch the wind. The spinning blades turn two electric generators located on the back of the unit. The current travels down the tower to a transformer, then on to power lines which connect it to a substation. Here the current is stepped up to 138,000 volts and connected by transmission lines to the statewide power grid. It's been uh, very exciting for me and my other fellow board members who are here with me to come visit this location today. Uh, certainly you cannot really appreciate the size of these windmills until you come and look at them. Um, I've visited in Europe and seen some of the, the two and three hundred year old versions and these are certainly different. Uh, they are certainly quiet and they have a certain beauty to them for some of us. I'm not too sure about some of the locals but so far everybody we've seen uh, seems to really appreciate uh, the wind energy farm out here. This is by the way the westernmost substation in the LCRA transmission system. It's about 100 miles east of El Paso. You've heard us talk about expanding our transmission system. Well, we've got a project that's on the books now to build another 138 kV line from this existing substation to accommodate more wind generation out here. We're going to build the system parallel to this one, parallel to this transmission line, but we're taking it another 75 miles further, so it's going to be a 100 mile transmission line that LCRA owns and will eventually interconnect with TU system at a substation called Wink. The LCRA has long been the leading supplier of renewable energy in Texas, starting with Buchanan Dam in 1937. Now the LCRA has hydroelectric units at all six Highland Lakes dams with a combined generating capacity of 276 megawatts. Now the LCRA has announced plans to double its commitment to wind power. We have just recently signed an agreement to purchase an additional 50 megawatts of wind from the same company that's developed the, the wind plants that we're standing under here, National Wind Power from England. And that's going to be developed about 150 miles from here, down near Fort Stockton in a place called Indian Mesa. I uh, just talked to the folks today. That plant is, the construction is beginning, the roads are being uh, prepared right now, and the first units will start going in place in January. The efficiency and output of these wind turbines has increased dramatically in the past few years. These original towers are 80 feet tall with 50 foot long blades. They have an output of 400 kilowatts of electricity. The next generation wind turbines stand 175 feet and have 75 foot long blades. They can each generate 750 kilowatts of power. The newest wind turbines are 225 feet tall and can generate 1.6 megawatts of power. That's a four-fold increase in generating capacity. Each megawatt of generation can supply 200 homes with electricity. The beauty of it is clean energy and um, no emissions, no, nothing's burned, there's no gas to purchase as gas prices have gone up. Wind has just become an excellent source for us. Senate Bill 7, passed by the Texas Legislature last session, calls for the creation of 2,000 megawatts of renewable energy in Texas by the year 2009. This can be from hydroelectric, solar, or wind power, but you can bet that the bulk of that renewable energy will come 
from the West Texas wind. After months of record heat and very dry conditions, the rains returned to Central Texas in a really big way. At the end of October and into early November, nearly five to eight inches of rain fell here in the Austin area, and up to a foot of rain fell in parts of the western hill country. On Friday, November 3rd, the Llano River rose out of its banks, cresting just under 30 feet, sending a huge wave of water into Lake LBJ. At the peak of this flood event, 175,000 cubic feet of water per second passed through Wirtz Dam, sending a thunderous torrent into Lake Marble Falls. The flood wave also brought with it a massive debris field here behind Wirtz Dam. Huge logs and boat docks were pulled through the floodgates in an avalanche of wood and water. Only moments after we filmed this loose ski boat, it was sucked through the floodgates becoming just another piece of debris. The night before, another boat owner found out the hard way just how dangerous it can be to operate your boat near a dam with open floodgates. One of the uh, folks jumped off and swam back, uh, and the other two stayed on the boat, and when it became lodged in the floodgate, they crawled up through the superstructure onto the dam to escape. They are extremely lucky to be alive. The hydraulics of this kind of water flow have been known to break up boats and docks and buildings as they come into here and just send them right up through the open floodgate. So they were lucky, especially the gentleman that jumped, jumped off and swam back. Uh, he's really lucky not to have been sucked through the gate. This flood event gave hydro crews their first opportunity to test many of the recent improvements made to Wirtz Dam as part of LCRA's dam modernization project. One of the new attributes of this dam, which we installed about a year ago, are new gate hoists, which allow us to selectively open and close each of the gates uh, on this dam. Previously, we had two gate hoists that had to be manually moved back and forth over the top of each gate and then connected, and then the gate could be raised. Today, with our new gate hoists and the work we've done as part of the dam modernization program, uh, which the board has allowed us to do over the last six or seven years. Today with these new gates, we're able to individually open and close each gate with a simple push of a button um, and without any uh, of the historical safety concerns that we had for our employees. I saw people talk about for several days and uh, it's a huge concern of, of flooding, especially in the Horseshoe Bay area. Uh, and very, very confident about LCRA's ability to to do all that's possible to minimize the risk of flooding, but obviously when you get a storm like this, anything can happen, but LCRA has done a wonderful job and it looks like it's been well controlled. Just downstream from Marble Falls, all 10 floodgates here at Starkey Dam were open, passing the flood wave safely into Lake Travis. Both Lakes Buchanan and Travis are way up after being at 16-year lows this summer. As of today, Lake Travis is at 675 feet elevation and still rising. With more rain in the forecast, Travis could soon reach full elevation of 681 feet. The question I get asked most often these days is, did the recent rain event end the drought here in Central Texas? Well, you have to look at drought from three different standpoints, the meteorological drought, the hydrologic drought, and the agricultural drought. Taking a look at the meteorological drought, rainfall totals since the first of the year are now pretty much close to normal. From the hydrologic standpoint, lake levels and aquifers are also very much close to normal. And from an agricultural standpoint, subsoil moisture now is really being recharged. So when you take a look at all three factors, the drought of 2000 is over. Lake Travis is one of the most popular recreation destinations in the entire state of Texas. These divers representing Oak Hill Scuba are among 1,000 volunteers who turned out on a recent Saturday morning to help clean up this hill country gym. It's all part of Keep Travis Clean 2000, sponsored by the LCRA and friends. We have had all kinds of partners and participants helping us. We've had about 16 dive clubs or dive organizations. We've had eight other organizations, including Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, 
UT service organizations, homeowners associations who live around the lake, just uh, all kinds of groups turning out uh, to do their part to clean up Lake Travis. Our spot is from the where that rope is there to where that rope is there. Do not About 500 divers from all over the region came out to do their part down under. I think it's just a good cause. I like to uh, to keep the, the lakes clean and the rivers and stuff. That's why I like to come out here is because because it's clean. So to do something like this is fun. I have a good time. I come out and meet a lot of new people. Weather's nice. It's just a beautiful day to be here. Oh, I think it's a great deal. You know, it gets everybody together as far as in the diving community. We're kind of a close-knit group anyway and gives us an opportunity to get together and have something good to do for the community at the same time. Meanwhile, hundreds of landlubbers scoured the shoreline at dozens of locations around the lake. This lake cleanup actually started back in mid-September when barge crews began removing large items such as cars and sunken boat docks. The LCRA Board of Directors authorized spending $200,000 to remove these navigational hazards while the lake was at this low level. The results of this six-week effort are amazing. 103 tons of debris were removed from the lake, including 14 boats, four cars, five houseboats, one barge, 17 boat docks, 235 barrels, 165 anchor drums, and much, much more. Even two kitchen sinks. Well, found this. <laughs> The volunteers collected 1,400 bags of cans, bottles, and other litter. They also came up with some rather large items, like this engine block and dozens more 55-gallon barrels. This combination of barge crews, shoreline, and dive volunteers made this the largest Lake Travis cleanup ever. I've lived on this lake since 1957. I'm one of the old dogs out here, but uh, uh, I've seen it when we would go out and fish, uh, we would see six or seven boats a day and think that was a lot of, a lot of traffic. Uh, of course, it's tremendous now. So there is a lot of extra trash, and over the years there's been storm damage and docks have been broken up. There's all kinds of stuff under the water. The whole lake community uh, really uh, benefits from, from the efforts of the LCRA on this thing, and we sure appreciate them doing it. Each year, divers find many unusual items on these cleanups, like this wallet with driver's license and credit cards in place. But this one may take the all-time prize. When diver Bill Flanagan came up with this old golf bag, it seemed a good find. But when it started thrashing around, he nearly threw it back in. Inside the bag was an 18-inch, four-pound flathead catfish, apparently living in there. Bill cut open the bag and returned the so-called Callaway cat to the open water. As always, LCRA employees turned out to help in all phases of the operation. Doing good, hard to keep up. All of the volunteers received t-shirts, lunch, and the satisfaction of a job well done. From high voltage electricity to high tech laboratory testing, Women have a defining role in technical careers at the LCRA, but they also know not enough girls are following in their footsteps. Nationally, the percentage of female engineers has not increased in more than a decade. This is a patch panel that connects them to a hub, to a server. That's why the LCRA has partnered with Girl Start, a nonprofit group that provides middle school girls with an opportunity to learn about math, science and engineering. The LCRA's Systems Operation Control Center was the perfect place to start this hands-on lesson. We're introducing them to different concepts of electricity, how it's made, how it's transmitted, and some of the support groups that make it all happen in hopes that maybe they'll learn a little bit to support their learning, um, but also to introduce them to some of the professional and technical women that do some of the work. 30 girls from Austin area middle school spent a Saturday recently learning how to make their own power. What are they doing? <laughs> and how are they making electricity? And demonstrating how electricity moves in a way they won't soon forget. Watch, boom. 
Boom. Boom. Boom. Boom. Boom. Got it? The girls had a unique chance to get close to technology, to explore the control center and to see what goes on behind the scenes, and to ask questions about electricity in their own lives. Can you tell, like, when someone is, like, celebrating something because of their electricity? We can tell, because the graph will go way up and then come way back down when you turn the lights on and off, so we'll be able to see that. We've been able to provide a lot of opportunities for these girls that without these mechanisms in place may not have been there. They, the women here are just wonderful role models. The lesson is about power and not just electrical power. These young lives may be shaped by what they learned here and that may expand the goals they already have for their future. What do you want to be when you grow up? A photographer. I want to design cars. I want to be like a doctor. Well, now that I've seen all these people and hear what they have to say, yeah, just gives me more of an influence on what I need to do and how I can do it. With the help of strong role models, these girls may begin to picture themselves in a technological career and perhaps someday as a member of the LCRA team. The LCRA supplies electricity to more than a million Texans through its wholesale customers, which include 10 electric cooperatives in 33 cities. LCRA also provides water to industry, cities, municipal utility districts, and agriculture. As a way of saying thank you to customers and the citizens of Central Texas, the LCRA management team puts on two old-fashioned community fish fries each year. About 600 community leaders, elected officials, and interested citizens turned out here in Luling for some good food and a chance to visit informally with LCRA staff and board members. Oh, I think this is a wonderful turnout, a real fine affair. I've been to several you've given in other cities, and I think LCRA is fine citizens of our area. They uh, do things that maybe don't get a lot of publicity, but people are beginning to see just how much you stand behind their parks and their waterways and so forth. Other things besides electricity. Well, when you see the type of people that come out and how many people come out, it's obvious uh, how important LCRA is to our communities. I guess, you know, you could say LCRA has always been important since its inception, but I think as water becomes more and more of an issue in the state of Texas, especially in my district where uh, in many areas we rely entirely on underground uh, water in our aquifers and we're realizing more and more we've got to reduce our dependence on that, LCRA's role is going to become incredibly vital. And uh, so we're glad that the leadership at LCRA has been willing to be progressive and be willing to get out there and do what it takes to take care of the folks in our communities. So we're awfully proud of what you've been doing. Sir? While taking care of his fish cooking duties, General Manager Joe Beal talked with us about customer relations. We're in a, a whole different world now from where we were two or three years ago uh, when it comes to the need to tend to our customers. We're in a world of competition. Um, from a power standpoint, uh, the customers of our customers are going to have the ability to, uh, to go to different places to get their power if they choose to. Um, therefore, we've got to be a whole lot closer to our customers to make sure that if they choose to compete, that they can compete as effectively as, as possible. And so that means we've got to know their businesses better, we have to know them better. Uh, we have to be able to put ourselves in their shoes so that um, as we look at our capabilities, we can figure out what we can do to help them more. Um, and to do that, we need to take the time to, to know our customers, and as I said, to know their business. Things like this tonight um, allow us to mix with elected officials, to mix with our customers on a, a real informal basis, and um, have the the kind of dialogue that you really need to have so that when you finally do business, you can do a better job of it. So to me, um, what we're doing here tonight is, is critical um, so that we can know the folks that we serve better so that we can serve them better. These events don't have a set program or agenda. It's just about visiting and having a good time. 
we have an opportunity for to have four or five hundred people, a lot of whom are customers of our customers, the co-ops and the, and the cities, and they come out and they see LCRA and they connect their city electricity or their co-ops business with LCRA. It gives us a chance for the directors to meet a lot of the, the community leaders, the mayors, the city council members, the co-op board members. So I think it's very valuable and, and I think for, for just for brand identity and name identity for uh, the LCRA it's invaluable. LCRA's customer relations representatives always play a big role in organizing and working these community events. The next Big Fish Fry will be held in May location to be announced. There's an old saying that Texas droughts end with Texas flooding. That old saying proved true this past weekend. Heavy rain has almost filled Lake Travis, but flood damage in Central Texas was relatively minor thanks to the Highland Lakes chain and those remarkable dams up there. News 36's Dan Robertson is live along the Tom Miller Dam with more. Dan? That's right, Robert. Uh, Lake Austin looks fairly calm right now, even though billions of gallons of water fell just upstream over the weekend. It's all thanks to the Highland Lakes chain, an engineering marvel that has tamed the wild Colorado. There wasn't any town like there was just a river running through Austin. R.A. Luxinger remembers Austin before the Highland Lakes were built. We had floods from time to time. There's nothing to stop them. Floods washed away parts of downtown more than once in those days. To tame the Colorado, six dams were built during the 30s, and the Highland Lakes were born. This past weekend, 150 billion gallons poured into the Colorado, but Austin was spared. Lake Travis did just as it was supposed to do. It caught that water and uh, kept downstream flooding from occurring. Joe Beal of the LCRA knows what floodwaters can do. It would have continued on down the Colorado, and it would have roared through Austin. We would have had widespread damage uh, through the downtown area um, in that area that's along Town Lake. Instead, Lake Travis has risen nearly 40 feet in the past month, enough water to supply Austin for three years. If not for the LCRA's dams, today's Austin wouldn't exist. You turn water loose, it's going to wash things away. Now, Lake Travis has risen about 22 feet since Friday, and for now, the LCRA has banned boating because of debris and high bacteria counts in the water. But in a few more days, life on the lake will be almost back to normal. Live from Lake Austin, Dan Robertson, News 36. I want, I want you to, I want you to understand that this is a special made hat that will only fit one man with the largest head in the world, next to Smokey the Bear, Mr. Thornhill. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We'll look forward to seeing you again next month.